Good day once again, and welcome back to our three-part, at least three-part discussion video on functions of several variables. In the previous part, we took a look into solving your domains of functions of two variables or maybe even three variables. Okay. Now we return to functions of two variables, in particular to this given function here g of x, y equal to square root of 8x plus 8y minus 4x squared minus y squared. And we will be doing the three items shown here. No? So first, let's take a look at finding domains again. Let's try item number five. Given g of x, y here, we want to solve for the domain of G and draw a sketch in the XY plane. Huh? Let's do that by again noting that since we have square roots here, the radicand should be non-negative. And that's going to be the main restriction for your domain of G. So there you go. So that's it, no? The radicand should be non-negative. Now, we will be solving or at least rewriting this inequality since it looks a bit complicated as is, no? Uh, well, if we start here, we have quadratic terms here. So let's try to complete squares and see what happens, no? In particular, if we rearrange the left-hand side, we get this, negative 4x squared plus 8x plus something, minus y squared plus 8y plus something. No? Uh, you may want to factor out 4 or negative 4 even from the first two terms, but in the end, we will need to add a term of negative 4. To complete the square, no? And as for the next two terms, minus y square plus 8y, that's the negative of y square minus 8y, to which we should be adding 16 to form a perfect square. But in this case, it will appear as minus 16. Okay? So that's completing the square which results in a term of negative 20, bale, negative 4 minus 16. So that's the left-hand side. And on the right, we should add negative 20 with the inequality preserved like this. Okay? So that's your inequality. And finally, we can rewrite this left-hand side by dividing it by negative 20 and then the inequality will be reversed. So when we rewrite the entire left-hand side, we should get this. The first three terms in the previous inequality is 4 times x minus 1 quantity squared. Okay. So when we divide by 20, we get this fraction. And also we get the second fraction here. Okay. So this is going to be the simpler to graph form of your domain. And that we know that we will be starting with an ellipse centered at x equals 1 and y equals 4, which is shown here. So it's elongated along the y-axis or parallel to the y-axis. Or in other words, your major axis is parallel to the y-axis. I will be leaving the endpoints of the major axis and the minor axis to you as exercises. But the point is, the domain here will be the interior of the ellipse, which we could verify by plugging in x equals 1 and y equals 4 which is in inside your ellipse. Okay? 
So that is item number five. Next, let's take a look at the sketch of the graph of G in 3D. Uh, there's a hint. Ito daw ay quadric. Well, maybe a, a full quadric, maybe a half quadric. By half, we mean maybe just a portion of the quadric, no? Uh, all right. Uh, the way to do this will be to set z equal to this expression for g of x, y. And then since we're not really comfortable with square roots, no? With working with square roots. So let's remove them. If we do so by squaring both sides, we get this. And then we move all terms on the right to the left. Of course, their signs are negated. And then we complete squares. So you may refer to the, pre to the previous item for a reason. Kung bakit ito yung nangyari sa left-hand side at kung bakit may 20. Okay? And finally, we divide everything by 20 to obtain an equation with 1 on the right-hand side. And on the left, we get this sum of squares. Okay? And there, we get a left-hand side with a sum of 3 squares equal to 1. So its graph will be uh, kung naaalala natin, it's going to be an ellipsoid centered at 1, 4, 0. Like that, no? But it will not be enough because remember, your z here is a positive or principal square root. So we will have to restrict your quadric here. In particular, we will be taking the portion of the ellipsoid where z is 0 or positive. So in particular, we will be taking the upper half of this ellipsoid centered at 1, 4, 0. Okay? So if we know how to, how to draw an ellipsoid, then we're... Okay with this sketch, no? Bale, ang gagawin na lang is take your 3D space, draw the ellipsoid, so maybe it looks like that, and then cut it at Z equals zero. So we visualize it by shading the upper half. Ayan. At this point, it will be better if he had drawn this graph in pencil para madaling burahin yung lower half. And there is your ellipse. Soid. Eh, ellipsoid. Upper half of the ellipsoid, which is the graph of G of XY. Okay? All right, and that is item number six. Finally, for this second part of our discussion, let's deduce the range of G from the graph, which we leave on this slide. Uh, this cannot, this could not be easily done for any given function, no? Just find the range. Yung domain, madali, madali lang. Kung ano lang yung pwedeng input, depende sa restrictions. But this one, it's a bit more complicated for a general function. But here, we can actually do that. In fact, we had stated the lowest possible output here from earlier. Uh... Since G involves a square root, it should be, or its output should be, at least zero. So at least zero. Hence, your range will start at zero 
And now, ang hahanapin na lang natin is if it will end somewhere. No? Kung may highest possible value of z equal to g of x, y. Uh, well, it's the graph here suggests meron. May highest possible value yan. Uh, saan kaya yun? Uh, remember, this expression inside yang 8x plus 8y, etc. We had rewritten it as an equation of an ellipse with 1 on the right-hand side. Okay? But this time, para ma-maximize or mapalaki yung nasa loob, yung radicand, we will have to set this expression equal to the lowest value possible, which is 0. Or rather, it's the lowest possible value which can enter the square root. Okay? So we have x minus 1 quantity square over 5 plus y minus 4 quantity square over 20 equal to 0, which is satisfied only when uh, sum of two squares equal to 0. Its graph is a point no? whenever we are asked to graph it. But here we only need the coordinates of your point. Now, graph dapat. So, x equals 1 and y equals uh, 4. And when we plug it in to your g of x, y, we should get square root of 20. Paki-verify na lang po yun. Anyway, that will give us the highest possible output. Okay? which now allows us to form the range of G. Interval, closed interval, 0 to square root of 20. So this point here at the very top of your ellipsoid has Z equal to square root of 20. Okay? All right, so that's it for item number seven and for part two of our discussion video. Okay. For part three of our discussion, our final part of the discussion, we will be looking at level curves and level surfaces. So. You may want to try these items first before viewing part three. Okay? Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next part.